Hey everyone, I'm Peter Kapsner, and this is the Moto Alliance podcast. I'm the president of Moto Alliance, and I am here with general manager Kevin Book. Kevin, it's been fun to get to know a lot of people in the community, and we've got a new guest here joining us. The podcast, yeah, absolutely, today. it's been great to have these conversations, and uh, anytime we can have somebody new and learn what's going on in other parts of the country is always exciting for me because. This is altogether new for me, this industry. So yeah, well, and you know, we've been doing this for 19 years as a company, but I think what I am increasingly becoming mindful of is that we're almost entirely utility-based company yeah. in terms of our various product lines. We really help people work the yard, ride the trails, work their land, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the racing community is something that's getting a little bit more traction with us that we're getting to understand a little bit better. And we've had some good guests on and today's guest is part of that racing community. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Yeah. Well, why don't we bring him in now? This, uh, we're going to be joined by Richard Carter, who's the lead administrator of a wildcat rider group and not just like 500, 5,000 members, Richard, you got a lot of people as part of this community. Yeah, we've got uh, 15,800 and something right now and growing. I mean, we, we enter members all the time. Yeah. And my understanding is, is that uh, you basically have some sort of racket going with Articat here where you, where you're getting some free demo machines and, and are sort of their crash test dummy on a regular basis. Uh, pretty much. Uh, I raced, I've been racing since 2015. I raced an old prowler, did some mud racing, and then I switched to a sport and I, or a trail and then a sport and then another sport. And then when the double X came out, I had to jump for that. Um, been racing that since 2018. Uh, I was doing a monster truck rally, the halftime show and broke the thing, uh, jumping too hard. Uh, got with Articat about getting parts for it. And they offered me this position, which is basically run the Articat wildcat riders group. It's, uh, I schedule events and rides around the United States each each year. I'll do three or four a year. Uh, we do giveaways every two or three weeks uh, in the group, and they give me a demo rig each year to trick out and take to these rides and take to the races just to show people, let them drive, um, just have fun with it. Man, did you ever imagine 10 years ago that this is what you'd be able to do day in and day out? I had no idea. I mean, I was racing and paying for everything out of my pocket. The racing <laughs> part, I still pay out of my pocket, but it's just, no, I had no idea. I mean, it, it's, I am so blessed to have this fall in my lap. I mean, it, it I, I can't believe it. I pinch myself all the time. Well, first of all, when you say earlier that, uh, you had had broken your your machine. What what specifically broke on your machine? Because we've had some conversations recently with some folks that do other racing uh, events and have learned a little bit more of what what makes these machines vulnerable for these races. But <laughs> we want to know to what degree you've broken these machines. I exploded the transaxle. Uh, <laughs> the front end landed before the rear end. I heard a pop, and that was all she wrote. Um, the 2018 the original one is has been known to have a weaker transaxle um and it that was the only one i broke um i've put about four thousand race miles on two different buggies and the second buggy and the new one i'm racing now is a turbo rig and it, you know they're just if you treat them right they work great if you do something dumb you'll break it <laughs> and is this pretty much the arrangement with these races then now because you're you're being given these demo units that come monday morning you're just filling out order order forms for parts that, <laughs> that you've broken over the weekend i i wish it was like that it used to be i'd call mls power sports and say hey mark i raced last weekend i need this i need that i need that and mark would box it up and ship it to me um or, or Country Cat, any of the Articat dealers. We had one in Louisiana that closed, uh, so I couldn't use them anymore. We had one here in Houston uh, that that isn't Articat anymore. They they actually who where I bought my machine from, my first double X. Um, and I would just, yeah, that would be once a month, Monday morning, um, hey, I broke this, and can you send it? And, you know, get a credit card number and fix it and be, awesome. be ready to race. There was one time we we had a dealer take parts off of a new rig so that I could race. We raced one weekend, and then we had to race the next weekend, uh, a backup race. And they they took a shock off a brand new rig, and said, and I stopped. They the salesman met me with it. I put it on the car, and went and raced. 
So that, that was probably 16 or 17 when that happened. So <laughs> it's been a while. I've pretty prepared with stuff now if I break something. Oh, sure. So Mark's been on our podcast before MLS. It, you said he used to supply you with parts. Is he holding out on you now, Richard? Like, is he, is he got some no, case against you? What's Mark, happening here? No, Mark is very integral in, in this. But since um, the Wildcat Riders position that I received, I contacted our cat, the race department to try and figure out some way to help regular guys. You know, I, the guys like me, I made a deal with Mark. I called him, he knew who I was. He followed me. Um, he offered me discounts on parts when I bought them from him, which was great for me as a racer. But, you know, we've probably got 20 or 30 guys out there doing this on their own. You know, they don't have anybody. Our cat doesn't have a dirt support team. So I got with the snow guys and set up a deal to be able to buy parts direct from Articat. So Mark doesn't have to do it anymore. So I'd order it from Mark and they'd ship it to him and he'd ship it to me. Now I just fill out some forms, send them to Articat and then they send them to me. So it kind of jumps one middleman, but I've been able to help. Gosh, there's gotta be 10 or 20 guys out there that I've helped with this system to just to try to keep racing because parts are expensive when you break them. So um, it, it was something that I was kind of passionate about. They kept saying, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. And I just took over and said, what do we have to do to do it? Hmm. So we, we, we do have that in place. I've got, like I said, 10 or 15 people, maybe 20 that, that are able to go to Articat and get parts. Um, I don't know that they do it as much, but we're, you know, we're not, we're not breaking as much. We figured out what to do, what what we need, and are you are you not breaking as much because the vehicles are becoming that much more dependable, or are you holding back? Are you not? That, are you well, not putting it's impressive. Yeah, that and we're learning. I mean, I I raced last Sunday uh, with my turbo rig. I got third place in the class, um, and I you know didn't break anything. So we didn't have any leaks. Nothing nothing silly going on when I unloaded out of the trailer. So. Um, you know, we're getting a handle on the things that are weak. We know to check them more often. Um, when I raced the 700, I broke six axles in one year. <laughs> oh, my um, goodness. <laughs> and it, we kind of figured out what it was. We went, had some axles made, and those axles are still being used today on another race rig. So, <laughs> What, yeah, you what, just got to overcome what you, what you fall into. Yeah, well, I got a text into Mark right now. Actually, that's what I was doing a second ago. We're just, we're just going to have to bring him in because I think Mark actually should supply <laughs> you with free parts at any moment that you need it. If, if you know, the Articap pipeline goes dry, don't you kind of feel like MLS should be there to have your back? Oh yes, completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it brings up the question that you brought up dumb earlier. We asked uh, one of our other racing buddies the question. So what, what is the dumbest thing you've done on the racetrack before, but it worked out awesome. Oh, the dumbest thing that worked out awesome, man. I can't think of one. <laughs> I mean, well, the dumbest thing was trying, I guess. I mean, I, I was hanging out with some guys at a mud park in Texas and they said, and we were trail riding and we were playing in the mud. I mean, it was up over the hood. And they said, man, you should race that thing. I'm like, what? <laughs> race? What, man? Come on, you need to race. And I raced it and I got third place in that class. It was a, it was an old 2006 Prowler that I had rebuilt and, and lifted and put big tires on. And, and, and I just, I had a blast. And that year, a guy with a trail won the whole thing. It was his second or third year to win. And we got to be friends and, and, uh, they canceled the stock class. They were only doing, you know, big modified stuff. So we were like, what are we going to do? What's, what's the next? And, uh, and one of us, there was three of us. One of us said, why don't we do try this cross currency stuff like GNCC? I'm like, okay, where do we do that? And it, where's it? There's a guy, people in Arkansas in uh, Louisiana doing it. So, and we started going over there, raced over there for, 2016 to 20, 20, 2021, I guess we raced that series and then they quit doing side by side. So now I'm racing in Texas, another series called TX4 racing mm. or TX4 cross country. So I'm racing in that series now. Yeah, it, I think but yeah, the dumbest thing was just trying yeah, because yeah. it just went nuts from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for you to have the opportunity to be up close and personal with the manufacturing of these vehicles, the way that you do, I think, 
you get level of access that a lot of people don't. And and I would say, Richard, the one thing that's impressed me about our community more than anything else is even when we went up to Thief River Falls, Minnesota, when Arctic Cat was doing a lot of production up there, you, you're with the real deal makers and decision makers of the entire company, but they tend to be normal guys just like you and me. Right. Correct. I, w- I went to pick up my second demo rig to the factory, did the factory tour. Um, and, you know, it's, we got to see some stuff. Then they, they asked me to be part of the photo shoot for the Black Hills edition double X. And I thought I'd just going up there as a representative for Wildcat Riders because we're such a big group. And they threw me some keys and said, this one's yours. Here's your radio. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? Yeah, we're doing it. And so being directed how to drive, that was a whole different thing. I mean, the, the directors were like, all right, we want these three cars to go. Richard, we want you to lead. And it was funny that they picked me to lead because I was the race car driver. The other guys were, were one was a, a, a engineer and, and one was uh, one of the guys that did the, the shirts and stuff. I mean, he, uh, the, well, I'm drawing a blank, but on the merchandise, he was yeah. a merchandise guy. And I did, it's like, okay. So I'd say, we want you to come tear and pass as fast as you can. Uh, we're going to be coming towards you in another car. And I'd say, cool. So they'd say action, action, action. And we'd go. And I went tear ass past them and <laughs> they said, all right, let's reset and let's all three go this time. Cause I was the only one that went and <laughs> let's do it about half speed. <laughs> so it was kind of that way the whole time. I was like, it, it, one of the takes was the same kind of deal. They called action. I went, nobody else went. I put the thing up on two wheels, <laughs> put it back down and turned the corner and kept going. I said, maybe we should keep it on two wheels this time. Yes, we, we should. So if you go to the Articat website and look at any of the double X pictures, any of the pictures with a light bar on the roof, that's me driving. There's oh, one really off the ground. I'm There's one right now. Bunch of dust behind it. it. It was just like I said. I'm so blessed to have to have fallen into this uh, with with no idea what I was getting into. I mean, I showed up. We have a thing called Wicked Walk at Weekend. That's where we schedule an event at a dirt park or somewhere, and we'll have a hundred to two hundred people there, mostly Articat people, and you know we we. We, we go do rides. We have dinner on Saturday night. We have vendors that give us prizes at dinner. So we do raffles. Everybody gets a raffle ticket and usually half the people there get some kind of prize. So, I mean, it's, I went to two of these events, just showed up, didn't have a car, didn't have anything, just showed up because I wanted to hang out. I wanted to see what it was. And one time Speedworks threw me the keys to a car and said, here, drive this. And I called Jeremy at Speedworks and said, um, are you guys here? Cause I saw their trailer. And he said, I'm not there, but I got two guys there. He asked me if I was there. I said, yeah, I'm here. He said, well, which one of them cars is mine? He said, drive them both. He said, just take one and go. <laughs> so I had a car for the weekend. Wow. Um, one of the guys from the group saw me in the parking lot. Hey man, I got an extra room. And, and so I stayed with them. I mean, the, the group itself is such a family. We've developed a, a motto family by choice. And, and it's truly mm. that way. I mean, our whole group, but anybody can come where I do this. We had a, you know, a 570 guy with a five, Razor 570 rode with us for years. Then he got a Wildcat. So, I mean, it's, we don't care what you ride. We're, it's family by choice. Come out, ride with us. Come spend two or three days with us. And, and it's just a blast. The last ride, someone, the first day, they weren't 10 minutes into the event and they blew up their motor. But they went all weekend. The wife rode with another one com, one guy. The husband rode with a guy, and they got to ride all weekend. They rode Thursday, Friday, Saturday with somebody else. They were there for dinner. We gave them a prize for the the worst, you know, the worst crash or the, the, <laughs> the hardest luck. We gave them a prize for that, you know, because I give out prizes to whoever drives the furthest, who helps the most. I mean, we we try to include the kids. We give them. Uh, medals for showing up walk at right arch medals you know we we try to include everybody and try to make it fun for everybody yeah Yeah, i mean it is it is one of the things you know alicia and i both kind of came into the industry at the same time and um you know that that was with no experience previously and it is true to being up here in minnesota to even having you share the stories that you are there locally in texas 
that it's it is the same spirit kind of in in all the communities that there's just a a camaraderie that's just built in you know all around not just the the shared interest of, in in you know what you're doing uh, with with your vehicles and the rides that you participate in, but just a value for being together and and coming together and and spending that time uh, with each other. So it's just so fun to hear even you sharing what you just did because it, it's so common for us to hear those stories and it doesn't matter who totally. we're interviewing. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I've made lifelong friends that live across the United States. I mean, mm. it's that serious. I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's hard to understand Yeah. until you do it. Yep. But I, I just, I don't know, MK, but I just, I wish I would have grown up in the community, yeah. now, you know, after getting to know what it just, I think about being a kid growing up among all these families and all these rides and all these events. I just, that's so different than, and I'm not like, of course, anti little league or, or football or some of the, the, but they're so competitive and so cutthroat compared to just being out on the trails over the weekend. I'd much rather see my kid out there. For sure. Yeah. 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 The trail riding, I mean, it's different than the racing, but it's, it's, it's just so fun. I mean, just uh, we, a lot of us have communication so we can talk on radios. We can talk to our passenger in the car um, because sometimes that's hard to do. Uh, the first time that we went, we didn't have it. Well, we have it now. So we can actually talk to who's riding with us or, if, you know, somebody gets in trouble, we can call ahead. We've always got a leader, someone behind, somebody in the middle that if we get somebody that doesn't have communication, you know, we keep up with them. Mm. You know, there's, there's rules for, you know, you get to a corner, you wait for the guy behind you. So we try to keep up with everybody when we're doing these group rides. Um, new people come all the time. They've never done it before. Right. They don't know what to expect. And then they end up coming. We've, we've had people travel to South Dakota from Kentucky, from Tennessee, from Ohio, from New York, because they've been at one of the other rides mm. and they wanted to, get, they just made it a vacation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Book. I'm embarrassed to admit, I mean, Richard's talking about this black Hills machine and I'm on the Arctic cat website right now, looking around at some of the pictures, pretty sweet, but I'm embarrassed to admit two things. One, we're way closer to the black Hills than he is. Yep. Have you ever spent any time in the black Hills? I like literally <laughs> have not spent a moment of my life no. in the black Hills. Number one. And number two, I don't have any idea what makes this the black Hills edition either. Yeah. So we got to get some insight. No, here. It's, I mean, anytime it's somebody says it takes 12 hours to get there. I yeah. mean, I may as well be in Costa Rica. That's totally I, bl like, I black out at 12 yeah, hours. So like, we, we have an event in South Dakota scheduled for July 10th. So we're going to be riding Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you guys should come. Bring that a machine. Be Don't bring a machine. Show up. I'll, I'll put you in a Black Hills to drive around. I mean, we're, we'd love to have you have one. And I, we did the, those photo shoots was done in the Black Hills. Uh, the Black Hills machine has larger tires, comes with a roof and GPS. It comes with a front bumper and a, and a winch. Uh, it has lower gearing for when you're crawling, doing trails and things like that. So it's, they built it to make it a crawling machine, a slower machine to try to, and people were saying, you know, oh, they're so high strong. You can't, you can't do rock climbing. You can't really good trail riding in a regular double X. You can, if you, if you know what you're doing, you can just clutch them. Right. But this thing was, they've upgraded so many things that the rear diff is better. The front, the front diff is better. All uh, that the steering box is better. It's larger. I mean, they, they've stepped it up with this. I mean, it looks like the same machine, but there are new things that have been done to it. Well, people will kid us about, you know, uh, new colors or new stickers. Well, there's more that goes into it than that. Well, there you go. Uh, we know more about the Black Hills we edition do. than we, do. we actually know about the Black Hills. Well, and I think let's be fair <laughs> too. Like if, if Richard said, all right, so, so K book and Kapsner are going to race one mile in two Black Hills machines. <laughs> if we had to do what he described, I think that race might take us the better part of a half a day to go yeah. a mile. And he's like, we're just newbies here, Richard, in terms of riding on, the, on that kind of machine, you're going to have to help us out. No, we, you, anybody can jump in it and drive it. The suspension is great. I mean, you don't have to be a race car driver. Does it have a pedal and a steering wheel? That, that's like, you know, that's, that's my knowledge right now. You got gas, gas, that's, that's what we're talking steering, about. and yeah. that's it. I like I mean, there's, there's no shifting. It's got a CVT. So, I mean, you just step on the gas. The harder you step, the faster it goes. <laughs> It sounds vaguely yeah. familiar. I yeah. think we can work our way yeah. around that a bit. That's right. Uh, so when did you say that ride was, Richard? Uh, July 10th. Uh, in the Black Hills, we have another ride schedule in February in, in California. I love the it. Superstition Mountain in California. 
We will do two more probably on the East Coast. The dates and locations of those aren't firmed up yet, but we are working on those. That's great. Oh, well, so this is one of those obligations that uh, you know, being in the position that you are, you have to probably travel to all these yeah, and be present really for all of them. Uh, right it's, through that. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Wow. I, I have to travel to every one of them. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we, they said, do you really want to go to California? I'm like, well, it's only 60 miles further than South Dakota. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I guess we'll go there because – People, you know, they'll say, when you come in the West Coast, when you come in the West Coast. Well, we have a racer out there, Mario Gutierrez, who has had kind of a small event. He called it the X Extravaganza uh, the last couple of years, and he invited us out. And I thought I talked to the other guys like, you know what, let's just go. So we are going to go out there in February. I think it's the 22nd um, through the 25th and ride at Superstition Mountain and see what that's all about. Never done it, but here we go. We've done uh, a, a group ride at Little Sahara State Park. We've been at Windrock. We've been at Ride World Blue. We've been in West Virginia at uh, Hatfield McCoy's. Uh, so we try to get around. We've been to uh, to Utah, to Sand Hollow. Um, they did one ride before me uh, in Moab, I believe. Um, Cause this has been, we, this group started about 2014. Uh, and I think MLS had a big part in that because they were selling a bunch of Articats and a bunch of guys wanted to get together and ride. Yep. So the first ride was in Rin, Winrock in 2014, the first week of Wildcat weekend. And it has just grown to be, you know, nationwide from there. Yeah. Mark was hitting us pretty hard this last week. He's saying, you guys have got to get down to Windrock. And so we weren't able to get it done this year. It just happened a little too quick, but we do have it in our sites for next year. It sounds like an incredible experience. Well, and we're going to, we'll probably be Windrock or Ride Royal Blue. We're leaning more toward Ride Royal Blue for our spring, our fall event. So that's in the same area. And we'd be glad to have you guys down there for that. Yeah, um, but Richard's put up way more of a persuasive, you know, argument for, for us sure to join is. him in, yeah. you know, the Black Hills. Yeah, Mark's going to have to up his did. game next yeah. time we talk to him a bit uh, on yeah. this one. <laughs> Richard, it's been uh, just awesome to get to know you a little bit and looking forward to the next year ahead and getting to know you and your organization a bit better and just uh, just super pumped for all that you get to do. Yeah, well, me too. I mean, I like I said, I'm so blessed. It's it. I I just I just can't believe it. I still pinch myself. I mean. <laughs> And, and people, what I've seen is they don't, I, I'm just a normal guy too. They think I'm something special, but I'm just a normal guy too. You guys uh, talked about that earlier, that the guys in the industry are just normal guys. Well, you know, we all have a passion. We all like doing something. I, I didn't know this would be as big a passion as it is, but here we are. Yeah, I love so it. Cool. Well, well, we'll wrap it there, K-Book. This has been really fun, just yeah. talking to all things uh, Arctic Cat, Wild Cat, learning the community a bit more. Absolutely. Richard, great to meet you. Well, thank you for your time and, you know, getting, getting with us on this. I mean, this is, this is another one of those opportunities who knew I'd be doing this. Uh, just, just again, so blessed and so happy that, that I get to do it. Yeah, we'll definitely do it again. Well, thanks everyone for listening to the Moto Alliance podcast and we'll catch you again next week.